taqwa. What I understand is the fear of Allah or the being aware of Allah. But could you explain this concept, the, the concept of taqwa, so the viewers will be able to take maximum benefit from uh, that information that they could fast better? As far as taqwa is concerned, just to give an example, taqwa is like if you are walking in a very narrow lane, which has got a lot of thorns. There are plants and creepers and trees with a lot of thorns. And you walk in that narrow lane, trying to prevent your clothes from getting stuck in the thorn and getting torn. So how well you do that, that is an action of taqwa. Linguistically, taqwa comes from the Arabic root word waqa, which means forbearance, which means fear, which means abstinence. Islamically, it means fear of Allah. Islamically, taqwa is the state of the heart of a human being and the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The consciousness of his presence and of his knowledge, which makes him do the righteous deeds. And it prevents him from doing things which are haram and makes him pious. That is the reason taqwa, if you translate one word, people translate as God consciousness or Allah's consciousness. It's translated as piety. It's translated as righteousness, in short. And taqwa, actually, as the blood prophet said, it is a shield. And taqwa is a shield which prevents you from the hellfire and it prevents you from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are various verses of the Quran which speak about taqwa. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 102, Ya ayyuhal lazina amunu, O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and die not except in the state of Islam. That means the believers should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and die not except in the state of Islam. And Ibn Masood bin Labi pleaded with him while giving commentary of this verse. He says, it means that the believers have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and should not disobey him. They have to remember him, they should not forget him. They should be thankful to him and they should not be ungrateful. And the criteria for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for judging any human being, it is taqwa. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 13, Ya ayyuhal nasu, inna khalaqnaakum, min zakrin wa unsa wa jalnaakum, shu'um ba'um wa qaba'a ila li ta'arifu, inna karamuk min dallahi atkaakum, inna Allah alimun khabir. Which means, O humankind, we have created you from a single pair of male and female, and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you shall recognize each other, not that you shall despise each other. And the most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who has taqwa. The criteria for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not sex, it's not color, it's not caste, it's not money, it's not wealth, it's not age, but it is taqwa. It is God consciousness, it is piety, it is righteousness. Only way one human being can be superior to the other, it is by taqwa. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad he used to always encourage the Sahaba and he always gave guidance to his companions that they should increase in taqwa. And especially when they went on a military expedition, he always said that fear Allah, have taqwa. And that was followed later on by the Sahabas in giving advice and the Khulfa Rashidin. And we also have a hadith of Hadith Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. He told his son Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, that have taqwa and fear Allah. And he said, you fear Allah and he will protect you. Have taqwa of Allah and he will protect you. And he further said that if you give in the way of Allah, Allah will reward you. And if you thank Allah, he will increase. Here we realize that there are many verses in the Quran which Allah gives us guidance about taqwa. For example, Allah says that taqwa is the criteria for a person to acquire righteousness and Allah to accept your deeds. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Ahzab, chapter number 33, verse number 70 and 71, 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا أو يو بليف هاف تقوى في الله فير الله and those who obey Allah and his messenger they are the people who will achieve a great reward would have reached a higher achievement and Allah gives a similar message in Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse number 27 where Allah says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the acts of those who are muttaqoon those who fear Allah that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the deeds of the people who have taqwa Point number two, those people who have taqwa, they gain the pleasure and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says in Surah Hujra chapter 49 verse number 13, that the most honorable in the sight of Allah is the person who has taqwa. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran chapter number 3 verse number 76, whoever fulfills his pledge and has taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed Allah loves those are muttaqoon. Allah loves those who have taqwa. The third point of taqwa is concerned, Allah says in the Quran, that because of taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives your sins and he increases your reward. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Talaq, chapter number 65, verse number 5, that anyone who fulfills his duty and has taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives his sins. He remits his sins and increases his reward. The fourth point mentioned in the Quran regarding taqwa is those who have taqwa, Allah keeps them on the straight path and prevents them from deviation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 29, Ya ayyuh al-lazina amun, O you believe, have taqwa. And Allah will give you the furqan. Furqan means the criteria to judge right from wrong. And there are various commentaries given. Some people said that furqan here means the straight path. Some people of the community said that furqan means paradise. So if you have taqwa, then you will go to paradise. Further, it's mentioned in the Quran. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Hadith, chapter number 57, verse number 28, that those who have taqwa, and those who believe in the messenger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them a light by which they are guided. So taqwa keeps you on the straight path and prevents you from deviation. How to achieve this taqwa? Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 21. Ya ayyuh nas O humankind, worship thy Lord who has created you and created those people who came before you so that you may learn taqwa. So if you worship your Lord, who has created you and people who came before you, you will learn taqwa. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 183, Ya ayyuh al amunu, O you believe, kutiba alaykum as Fasting has been prescribed to you. Kama kutiba alal lazina min kablikum. As it was prescribed to people who came before you. Lallakum tattakun, so that you may learn self-restraint, the word here, tattakoon, so that you may learn taqwa. So here there are two examples given, how can you learn taqwa? One example is we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we know salah is the best pillar, that a Muslim is supposed to offer salah, he has to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day. And this keeps him on the straight path, and this increases his taqwa. And the second thing, one is the daily activity, and Ramadan fasting, is the annual activity, like how a body requires overhauling once every year. Every machine requires servicing. Some require once a month, some require quarterly, some require yearly. And if you allow me to call the human being a machine, it is the most complicated machine on the earth. Don't you think it requires servicing? So Ramadan is the overhauling, is the servicing of the human body, body as well as soul, once a year during the month of Ramadan. And this increases the taqwa. It increases your God consciousness, righteousness, piety, as we discussed in all these days. And I'd like to give an example. There was a Sahaba. When Ramadan was coming, Makkah used to be very hot. So he is traveling towards Taif, just a couple of days before Ramadan. And there's a Bedouin who's traveling the opposite direction from Taif to Makkah. So this Sahaba asked him that, aren't you afraid of the heat 
in Makkah during Ramadan. So he says, I am running away from the hellfire. So that was his taqwa. So that gives an example of taqwa. Who is most righteous? Allah says in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 32, whoever honors the symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the person of taqwa. Allah further says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 204, that you may be dazzled with some people's speech and they may swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the heart is clean. But Allah knows that these people, they are vicious enemies of humankind. Allah says in the Quran, talking about awliya, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 62 and 63, that those people who have taqwa are the people who are awliyas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Awliya means a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means those people who have taqwa who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are the people who are awliyas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah further says in Surah Anfal chapter number 8 verse number 34, Allah says, but most of them realize not. So these are the few verses and many other verses which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about taqwa in the Quran.